Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to Church Online. So happy that we can connect by way of Church Online. We do want you to know that we continue to meet in person, 1030 a.m. every Sunday morning, and we invite you to come. Of course, that's when you feel comfortable. But as I have mentioned before, we are taking and making uh, every effort to make sure that our sanctuary, our restrooms, are, have all been disinfected on a daily basis every time that the sanctuary is used or classrooms. And then we also have sanitizing stations placed throughout the, uh, the sanctuary. So we, uh, when you feel comfortable, we invite you to come back. We've been having a wonderful time of praise and worship together. So, uh, so I want to invite you to do that. I want to make a, a special announcement. You'll be hearing more about it in the days to come. And that's TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. And we're looking forward to launching Thank God It's Friday on the 18th of June. Of course, it's a Friday at 7 o'clock. Check-in will be 6.45 to 7 o'clock. And then uh, we'll have a great, great program uh, that's already being worked on for the boys and girls. Uh, also, our, our Lita Youth will be meeting on Thank God It's Friday as well. Of course, the single adults will continue to meet on Fridays. So it's going to be a Thank God It's Friday day. So we invite you to come, uh, begin to, to pray that God's blessing will rest upon each and every part of this effort. And I will surely thank you for that. So keep your eye on the, uh, our Facebook. Keep your eye on email blasts that go out. And then, of course, we'll be making an announcement about it as we get closer to the date. June 18th, TGIF. Thank God It's Friday. Don't miss it going to be a great time together. Well, listen, let's just uh, pause now for a time of praise and worship like we do each and every Sunday. And uh, as the worship team leads, don't hesitate to lift your hands. You may even want to shout a praise, clap your hands, whatever. But, uh, but give praise and give glory, give honor to God for his faithfulness to us. So let's do that now. Let's just uh, enter into a time of worship before we come to our message this morning. the word at the beginning Bond with God the Lord most high the hidden glory in creation now revealing you are Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, and nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of didn't want heaven without us so Jesus you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater and what can separate us now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is, and nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil torn before you. He silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. For you are raised to life 
again and you have no rival you have no equal now and forever God you reign yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. And you have no rival. You have no equal. Now in four. Yours is the kingdom, and yours is the glory, and yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name. Nothing can pet against what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Well, thank you so much, worship team, for leading us in worship. Praise to the Lord. And of course, we say it so often, he is totally worthy of our praise. Well, listen, we want to continue on the series of messages where we have been looking at the blessing of God. And I'm convinced the longer I have served the Lord and been with God's people, the more I am so convinced, even according to the scripture, that God desires to bless his people. That's his, uh, his desire. He, he, God is love, and um, in love always expresses itself to the object of its love. And we're the object of God's love. We're his creation. We're his prized creation. And, uh, and he, he desires, he wants to bless you, and he wants to bless me. There's a passage of scripture that we find in the Old Testament, Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. And, uh, and right from the get-go, God places his hand of blessing and he expresses it to his people. Uh, and, and he told Moses this here. The scripture says this, The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you, how you are to bless the Israelites. Now, uh, Aaron and his sons and the priests of that day were were in essence pastors of God's people. They were the shepherds of God's people. And he told Moses to tell them this here. Tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you're going to bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The, the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and then the Lord says, God says, and I will bless them. And that's what he says. And so the Israelites, they were God's chosen people. They were God's people. And he chose to put his hand of blessing upon them. They were a favored people. They were a protected uh, people. And they were a people who God gave ear to their prayers. He watched them. He heard them. And you know, today... We're God's people. If you've made a commitment to follow Jesus Christ and you've put your faith in his death and his resurrection, uh, you've asked him to forgive you of your sins, you've received the free gift of eternal life, then, uh, then you are a follower of Jesus 
and God desires to bless you, to richly bless you in every way. And so we looked at that there and we came to the understanding and looking at the scripture several weeks back that, uh, that God's desire is to bless his people, period. It's his desire to bless his people. Now, there's a, uh, there's a passage of scripture that we looked at and we threw out a 30-day challenge uh, the beginning of May. And I said, listen, folks, for 30 days, and if you missed it, I want to encourage you to begin today with this 30-day challenge, and that is to pray the prayer of Jabez. Because we, we will ask ourselves, okay, that God wants to bless us, but how do I unlock the blessings of God? I, I know the Lord. I'm a follower of Jesus. How do I unlock those blessings? How do I walk in the blessing of the Lord? And we mentioned this here. The first thing, the first key is to ask God. Cry out to God for an outpouring of his blessing upon your life. Now, we looked at the prayer of Jabez, and this is what we asked you to do for 30 days to, to pray this prayer. And, and this is what, what it says here. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. It says this here, And Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. And I think it's important for us to recognize those first three, those first three words in that passage. Jacob, Jabez cried out. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. And I want you to know it wasn't a whisper. It wasn't something he prayed in his heart, in his soul. Now the Lord hears those prayers. But that's not the way Jabez prayed, the scripture says. It says that he cried out. There was a passion. There was an earnestness. There was a crying out to God. There was a, uh, a sincerity. There was a desperation. God, he, uh, he cried out to the God of Israel. And this is what he prayed. He said, oh, that you would bless me, that you would enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me, Lord, he said, and keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. And then the, Lord, the scripture says, the Lord answered his prayer. And I want you to know, you can pray that prayer. I want to encourage you to pray that prayer. And then the, the next thing I want you to do is not only do that for 30 days, but expect God to move in a special way in your life during those 30 days. Begin to plant seeds. Uh, begin to do something that God can bless. And so uh, let's pray that, that, uh, that scripture. And Jacob, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you'd bless me indeed, that you'd enlarge my territory, that you would keep, let your hand be with me, that you would keep me from harm so I'd be free from pain. And the scripture says that God answered his prayer. And so we see five, really five lessons in that passage of scripture, you know, alone. The first thing the scripture tells us about Jabez is he cried out to God. And again, I want you to know, he didn't whisper. Uh, he didn't pray it in his head. And as I mentioned before, God will hear any prayer that's directed to him. But there was an earnestness. There was a, uh, a beseeching of God. He cried out to God. The, the scripture says, and he acknowledged who God was. He was the God of Israel. He's the God of the universe, the great creator, God. And he cried out to him. And then it says this here. He said, that you would bless me. And Jabez not only recognizes as God as the one, the only one that can bring the blessing upon him, but he also recognized, as we mentioned, that he recognized who God was. God is the only one who could bring the blessing upon his life. And so when you pray, do it with a heart fully invested in the blessing of God. Oh God, that you would bless me, that you'd bless me richly indeed. And then he said that you'd enlarge my territory. Um, and you know, a lot of folks think this is, could be financially. Uh, they think it is financially. And I don't have any problem with that at all. Ask God to, to bless you so that you're debt free. Take steps to, uh, to work toward being debt free so that you don't owe anybody anything. But also Jabez in his prayer, not only bless me and enlarge my territory, give me more land, but he's also praying for greater influence that he can have an impact for generations to come. And so he said, God, enlarge my territory. Bless me, bless me richly, enlarge my territory. And uh, 
Lord, bless me in every way. Bless me with finances. Bless me with a, with a passion for, for you. Bless me so that I can be a blessing to others. And uh, that was Jabez's prayer. Uh, enlarge my territory. And then he asked this here too. He said, because I want your hand to be with me. And, and Jabez wanted God in every moment of every day of life that he gave to Jabez. And he understood the power of God's hand. He wanted God's hand guiding him and directing him. You know, life isn't just, you know, a bed of roses that you, you, you know, walk in the park. There are tough times. You say, well, how about for the follower of Jesus? Absolutely. Uh, we weren't promised an, an error-free, a, uh, a painless uh, life, a painless journey. No, um, the Lord didn't promise that, but he did say this, but I'll be with you and I'll take you through it. If you come into a circumstance, a trial, he said, you may go into it, but I'm going to bring you out of it. And so Jabez is saying, listen, I want your hand to be with me, God, in every situation, every circumstance, would you be with me as I, as I move through um, this path, this journey of life that you've allowed me to have. And so he says, God, I want your blessing. I want your provision, but I, I really want you to be with me in every circumstance that I go through in life. Oh, would you be with me, Heavenly Father? Be with me. Go with me. Guide me. Direct me. Uh, lead me in the straight path was his cry. And then he said, you know, keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. And the name Jabez and as we've looked at this in the past, the name Jabez means born in pain. And his own mother named him Jabez because it was in pain that she endured during labor to, uh, to give birth to Jabez. And so when Jabez is praying, he's, he's, really, he's also speaking against the testimony of his name. Uh, and, he, and he lets go of the shame that, it, that covered him. Can you imagine walking around with that name Jabez? And everybody knows what the name means. Uh, hey man, you were born, you were birthed in pain. You caught your mom some tough times. And uh, can you imagine growing up with that there? But, but when Jabez is crying out to the God of Israel, and uh, the scripture says he was, he was more honorable than his brothers, and he, and he cries out to God. He's, uh, he's, he's really crying out to God, even against the, the testimony of his name, and he lets go of it. Uh, and, he, and so when you pray, and when I pray, let's come to God vulnerable, and let's come to him ready for him to turn our weakness into strength, our weakness into his glory, and he can do that in your life. So there's another thing that's so important in embracing the blessing of God in our lives. And the second thing is this here is... God's favor and God's blessing really comes from his word. It's, uh, it's knowing his word. It's reading the Bible. It's making the Bible a part, God's word, a part of your life. Uh, the standards, the values that, we, that God shares with us in his word. Um, he gives them to us for, for a reason, for our success in our walk and in our relationship with him. So make God's word a part of your life. Latch on to the promises of God. Embrace the promises of God. Walk in the promises of God, and you'll find the uh, tremendous blessing of the Lord. I like Psalm 1 is one of my favorite psalms, where the psalmist writes, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. He says this here, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate both day and night, and then the scripture says he'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. And then it says, his leaf also shall not wither. And I like this piece, this passage. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. In other words, he's going to have success. In other words, he's going to experience the tremendous blessing of God upon his life. In, in Revelation chapter 1, verse number 3, we also read this here. It's an introduction to the book of the Revelation. It says, he says, Blessed is the, man, the one who reads the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take heart to what is written. Now, I'm, I'm confident it was 
it's an introduction introductory remarks to this passage of scripture saying hey you read the book of revelation there's blessing with it but listen this is god's infallible word his perfect word no error in it it's perfect and uh, listen that promise really is for this for the whole bible read god's word you read god's word you promise the blessing of god to uh, to happen in your life and then the third thing is if you want to unlock the blessing of god and walk in the favor walk in the blessing that jabez did then uh, listen be obedient to god's word walk according to the standards that are in the scripture embrace them make them a part of your life your everyday life make them a, a part of of your life so that the decisions you're making are based upon biblical principle and if they're based upon biblical principle you have the promise of god that he will bless you he'll be with you in whatever you do wherever you go and so it you know obedience to god's word make good choices make right choices you make the right choices the right decisions based on biblical principle and you're going to reap what you're sowing make bad decisions for the right now and right now only and you'll live with some regrets until they're taken care of um, so so listen obedience to god's word how can god this is a good question how can god bless and allow his favor on those who go on habitually sinning how could he do that how could he bless them listen you reap what you sow um i want to say it again give god something to bless a lot of times we say oh just bless me but listen give god something to bless and we're going to talk about that in in just a minute but the fourth thing uh that's important to do is i often mention this here uh when we're together that it's important to worship God with the three T's, our time, our treasure, and our talent. God has given everyone time. And, and I know in this culture that we live in, it seems like nobody has time for anything. Uh, but God has given us time, and, and he wants us to make time for him. Make time to serve the Lord. Um, don't get so busy where you say, well, I can't, I can't really give, I can't really invest, I can't be, be involved in the ministries of the church, I can't be involved in investing in people. I can't be involved in discipling someone. I'm just too busy. Listen, if that's the case, then, uh, then you're too busy. You need to drop some things in your life and, uh, and make the Lord a priority. Invest in God's people. Give him time. That might be teaching a Sunday school class. It might be helping with a small group. It might be helping with ushering. Um, it might be helping in the Rangers, with the Rangers, or the Girls Club, Impact Girls Club. Um, uh, it might be helping in TGIF. Thank God it's Friday uh, program. So, but but your time. Give God your time. Um, some of your give a tenth of your time to the Lord and, and watch how He blesses you. Your time, your talent. God's given you a talent and an ability, and your treasure. Uh, remember to worship Him. I, Terry and I often say, you know, uh, tithing is just the beginning. That ten percent of our income. No, no. We have always given above that. And that's not to pat ourselves on the back. But we've also, we love God. And we've always given him above and beyond the tithe. Uh, giving to missions and special ministries like Teen Challenge. Uh, ministries like that there. And, uh, and I'll tell you what. God has never failed to bless us. He's never, never, ever failed to bless us. And I think it's because um, we've been faithful with the three T's. And I know many of you that God has blessed you richly. And, uh, and as I look at our congregation, there's many who are, who are blessed, but I can tell you this here, there are people who, who give of their time, their treasure, their talent. And as a result, uh, God has taken what they've given to him and he has blessed, he's multiplied his blessing upon them. Well, listen, the blessing of God, we want it. We want it. But I had a, uh, a professor in college, his name was uh, Norman Arneson, Professor Norm Arneson. He was one of the tougher uh, uh, professors at Bethany University, but he was a great one. He was a great one. Never forgot his word, uh, this, this word. He said, listen, if you want God to bless you, then give him something to bless. Never forgot it. Um, listen to that word that he shared. He's gone on to be with the Lord, but what a powerful word. A great truth. 
if you want God to bless you, then give him something to bless, which takes us right into sowing and reaping. I, you know, I can't think of a greater principle in the scriptures for us to, to, uh, to really understand and to embrace because the blessed light, the blessing of the Lord, that, uh, that prayer, seeing it come to fruition, comes through giving something God to bless, for God to bless. Part of those 30 days is you're giving God something to bless. You're making time in crying out to him. Say, oh, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Keep your hand on me. Lord, keep me from harm so that I'll not experience tremendous pain. And you'll have God answering your prayer. So when we talk about sowing and reaping, we got to remember this here is number one, that everything starts with a seed. Everything. Not some things. Everything in life. Think about it for a minute. What do you know of has begun without a seed being planted? You're right, nothing. Uh, you say, well, our, our, our church facilities, well, somebody had a dream. Uh, God put a dream in somebody's heart to say, uh, you know, some 63 years ago, um, put a dream in somebody's heart to start a church in Arlita. And here we are um, from 1958 to now, 63 years later, uh, the church that God placed a dream in a, in a man's heart. He started a church, put a dream in her heart. They built a building, put a dream in her heart. They built another sanctuary of which we're worshiping in now. Everything starts with a seed. Everything starts with a seed. It's important for us to know that there. So our, you know, our next question is though, okay, uh, Pastor Sammy, if I'm gonna plant a seed, what is a seed? If I'm gonna plant something, how, what is a seed? It, listen, this is what a seed is. And uh, write this down if you've got a pencil. A seed is anything, anything that you give away that has value. Now, praise has tremendous value. That's a seed. Praise someone, uh, encourage someone, give advice to some good advice, biblical advice to someone, uh, give away your time, your, your talent, your treasure. Those are seeds. Uh, give away your experience helping someone, those are seeds. A seed, again, a seed is anything I give away in order to help somebody else. Um, words can be seeds as well. Encouraging words, building somebody up, those are seeds. Then God takes those. You say, well, I would like those. Well, I would too, but I tell you the way to get them is by giving it away. You want praise in someone to, to, to encourage you? Encourage others. Watch it come back to you. Um, you want to experience the blessing of the Lord? Then give, give, give. Give of your time. Give of your talent. Uh, and you'll, you'll see God move in a tremendous way in your life. So everything starts with a seed. Remember that. When we're praying these 30 days, uh, the Jabez prayer, oh, that you would bless me, God. Oh, God, that you would bless me, that you'd enlarge my territory. Um, that you'd keep your hand on me, that you'd keep me from pain. Listen, those 30 days, you're praying that prayer, give God something to bless. You're praying it, keep praying. Now give something to the Lord so that he can bless it. Give him some seed that he can cause to grow in your life. Number, the second thing is, we want to remember is, nothing, nothing ever happens until a seed is planted. You know, the uh, scripture in John chapter 12, verse number 24 it says this here, Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat, that's a seed, unless a grain of seed of wheat falls to the ground and is buried in the ground, it can't reproduce. But if it dies, it will reproduce much fruit. You know, about a year ago, there's a, 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 a lady in our church, Sister Connie Martinez. She's got, uh, you know, she, you know, they use the, the, the saying green thumb. If anybody's got a green thumb, it's her. She uh, plants these beautiful gardens every single year. And of course, I love it because I'm one of the recipients of those delicious tomatoes. Uh, but she, uh, but she, she plants seeds. Now, I, I thought, you know what? I want to I plant a garden. I want to do it. Last year, um, around this time, I, I purchased some seeds uh, to plant some tomatoes. And I want you to know that the seeds never sprouted. They never grew. They never grew. And uh, you might say, well, how come they didn't grow? Did you not take care of it? Did you not cultivate it? What happened? What went on? Well, the, the answer is really simple there. 
is I never planted them. And as we, many of you know that we have uh, been in the process of moving, packing up and all those kinds of things uh, because our house sold. Um, I guess what I found, I found a packet of tomato seeds in the packet. You think they're gonna grow? No, absolutely not because they weren't planted. Uh, listen, nothing happens until a seed is planted. Can you imagine a farmer going, go, looking at his field and saying, going out to the store, buying a big sack of 100 pounds of seed to, uh, to plant, and he's there, and he's excited about this crop. He sees his land, and uh, he prays, goes out, God, give me a great crop. Give me a, give me a you know, cause this, cause me to have a bumper crop, a, a uh, for this, this uh, my field to go crazy. Lord, do it, Lord. I mean, he, he can pray that every single day of his life. And guess what's going to happen in his field? You're right. Nothing. How come? Because he never planted the seed. Uh, give God something to bless. Give God something to work with. And yes, I know God created the universe. You know, I, I'm not here to argue that God can make a crop grow on a bare land. I, I, I know, but I'm saying... 99.9999% of the time, he uses what we give him, and he blesses it, and he multiplies it, and he causes it to grow. And so, listen, plant that, plant the seed, because nothing's going to happen until that seed is planted. And then once that seed is planted, then faith comes in. Because um, I've, I've never seen a seed being planted, and boom, the next day it's... it's uh, it's grown, it has fruit on it, and it's ready to harvest the fruit. And I've never seen that happen before, but I have seen this here, that the seed germinates, and then it begins to grow. So that little shoot starts to come up, and all of a sudden it begins, that vine grows and grows, it begins to mature, and all of a sudden you see these yellow blossoms on it, and all of a sudden you see these little, grand, little round uh, tomatoes starting to grow, and they grow and they grow and they grow, they turn red, and it's time to harvest them. But it takes time. Now, I mentioned that this, this, this lady's sister, Connie, in our church, she has a great, great garden. She plants the seeds. And you know what? She doesn't go out every day and, uh, and, and dig up where she planted the seed to see if it's growing. She doesn't do that. It would destroy the harvest. It would destroy the plant. But she goes out every day. She cultivates it. She takes care of it. She waters it. Uh, she makes sure it's doing well. If there are any insects, she makes make sure to take care of them. She cultivates these, uh, these, these, uh, this garden, and because of that, it grows. But just think what would happen if she went in and started digging up to see what's happening. And, uh, and Jesus said it like this in Mark chapter 4. He said, the kingdom of God is like someone who plants a seed in the ground. Uh, it's, the par it's a parable about the kingdom of God. Uh, and the kingdom of God says is, so, is like someone who plants seed in the ground. Night and day, whether a person is asleep or awake, the seed still grows. But the person does not know how it grows. And so plant the seed. You want the blessing of God? You keep praying that every day and start looking for ways that you can plant seed, giving away something that's valuable, your time, your talent your treasure, a word of encouragement, a word of kindness to helping someone along in their relationship with the Lord, helping somebody in their yard, doing their yard work. Those are seeds because that's something valuable that you're giving away. Well, the third thing is when you have a seed, when you have a seed, um, plant it. When you have a need, plant the seed. When you've got that seed, plant the seed. When you've got a need, plant the seed. The seed. What's your need? You might say, well, I'd like to have some encouragement in my life. Then plant the seed of encouragement. Start encouraging people. Um, well, I would like uh, people to, um, to help me with uh, some chores that I have. Then help other people. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Uh, plant seeds. You do that, and the Lord has promised that it's going to come back. It's going to come back to you. There are times, I, I've said this before, there are times prayer is extremely important, but there are times where we shouldn't pray. So what do you mean, Pastor Sam? There's times where we have prayed, we have cried out to God, 
And then it's time to move forward and uh, to do something, give God something that he can uh, bless and he can bless uh, richly. The Bible says this in Ecclesiastes chapter 11. It says, do your planting in the morning and in the evening too. In other words, do it all the time. Always be planting seeds. Uh, he said, you never know whether it will all grow well or whether one planting will do better than the other. Sounds like an investor to me. Let's be investors uh, for God. The fourth thing is, whatever I plant is what I'm going to reap for good or for bad. Whatever I plant... Uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7 says this here. You will reap exactly what you plant. You will reap exactly what you plant. Let's say it together. You will reap exactly what you plant. One more time, all together. You will reap exactly what you plant. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7. If a farmer plants tomatoes, what's he going to grow? You're right. If he plants green beans, what's he going to grow? You're right. If he plants tomatoes in his, uh, watermelons in his field, is he going to grow tomatoes or cantaloupe uh, or some other green melon? Uh, no, he's going to grow watermelons. How come? Because that's the seed he planted. And the scripture says, what's over man sows, that he'll also reap. Whatever you, re you will reap exactly what you plant. And so, uh, I could share some, some examples of this because it's true. God's word is true. You're going to reap what you sow uh, for good or for bad. Here's are some of the uh, negative examples. Job chapter 4 verse 8 says, People who plant trouble harvest it. Another one, Proverbs 22 verse 8, Whoever sows sin reaps weeds. Proverbs 22, 8, again in the uh, New Living Translation says, those who plant seeds of injustice will harvest disaster. Hosea 10, 13 says, You planted wickedness, and now you will reap evil. Matthew 7, 2 says, uh, Whatever measure you use to judge others will be used to measure how you were judged. So what you sow, you're going to reap. It's throughout the scripture, throughout the Bible. Uh, here's some positive examples. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 18. The one who sows righteousness will reap a sure reward. Hosea 10, 12. Plant good seeds of righteousness and you'll harvest, oh listen, you'll harvest a crop of my love. James chapter 3, verse 18. Peacemakers plant seeds of peace. And what do they reap? They reap a harvest of goodness. You see, when we look at this, this whole concept, biblical concept of planting, sowing, and reaping, this is not like small potatoes kind of stuff. This is huge. It's life impacting. It's today impacting. It's tomorrow impacting. Um, until we see the Lord, this law of the harvest will impact our lives in ways we never dreamed of. And so... As we, we take on this challenge, the prayer of Jabez, and we begin to plant seeds, I want you to know it's, a, it's just a law of the harvest. It's not maybe God will do something in your life. No, God will do something in your life because he's promised to. It's a law of the harvest. You cry out to God, Oh God, bless me. Bless me indeed, oh God. Enlarge my territory. Um, you keep your hand on me. Keep me from pain. Uh, you cry out to the Lord and you begin planting seeds. Remember, a seed is anything valuable that you give away. Uh, you'll see God do something miraculous in your, um, in your life. Well, the other thing is, is remembering that you're not the only sower. Um, there are others who sow. You're not the only sower. There are people who sowed seeds uh, and your life has been impacted by it. Think about that. You can sow seeds now that will impact your sons and your daughters and your grandkids and your great-grandkids. How do you do How do you? Well, by planting good seeds right now. They're going to harvest. You plant them. You plant good biblical principles in how to live in your sons and your daughters. I want you to know you're going to reap a harvest of sons and daughters 
making good choices. And I, you, you can't force them to do anything, but you can certainly show them the right way. And then it's in their court. But I have seen this happen time and time again over the years. Um, I've looked at it you know, through my own grandparents. Um, through my own grandparents, I think about, about them, um, the, how, how God honored them, and how all of my aunts and my uncle served the Lord. My grandmother used to pray every single day, every single day, three times a day. In the morning when she got up, she would make time at noon. I remember she'd come to stay at our house. Noon time, she would go to the room, and she'd spend time praying. I'd go and peek in the door, and I'd hear this little four-foot-ten lady crying out to God, and I would hear names that were being mentioned as she prayed, and uh, prayed for me. Is it any wonder that all my aunts and my uncle serving the Lord, is it any wonder that all of my first cousins are serving the Lord? Is it any wonder that all of my second cousins, um, there's a strong faith in the family? Well, how come? Because there were seeds that were planted early on that are coming to fruition now and will for generations to come. Well, number the, uh, the sixth thing, and then we want to cover some more next Sunday, but the sixth thing is, I'll always reap in a different season than I sow. So the Bible says there's a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven, a time to plant, which is a time to sow, which is right now, and a time to harvest, a time to scatter, and a time to gather as well. So remember, uh, you know, sometimes God answers stuff immediately, but most of the time you'll find that it's a process. The seed is planted, it's cultivated, it's, you spend time with it, and then God gives the increase and the blessing on it. So I want you to challenge you again this morning. Uh, pray the prayer of Jabez every single day, 30 days, and begin planting seeds. And then I just want you to do this. I want you to expect and look for the blessing of God in your life every day. Because it's coming your way. It's coming your way. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we're so thankful this morning for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you for the promises of your word. And we thank you for this, pro for this, this prayer of Jabez that we can pattern our prayer after and crying out to you. And Lord, we do that this morning. We cry out to you, the God of Israel. We cry out to you and we ask you for your blessing upon our lives. We ask you to enlarge our territories, our sphere of influence. Oh God, grant that, we pray. Keep your hand upon us. Keep your hand upon every one of us. And then, Lord, uh, keep us from, uh, from, from walking in the wrong path, causing ourselves pain. Keep your hand upon us. Lord, if there are those who are listening in this morning, I just pray that they may not know you. They may not be followers of you, Jesus. I pray you'd minister to them. Lord, let them know all they have to do is just come to you, put their faith in you, in what you did on the cross for them. Put their faith in you, the resurrected Christ, uh, Lord. And, and as they receive the free gift of eternal life, they become followers of, of you, Lord. Bless them, we pray. And we'll thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray it. Amen and amen and amen. And again, I just want to say, if you've never received Christ, you could do it this morning to say, just put your faith in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Ask him to come into your heart, into your life, to forgive you of every sin you've ever committed. And he'll do just that and receive him and relationship with him. And with it, begin today to cry out for the blessing of God on your life. God bless you, everyone. We'll see you on Wednesday night for Church Online.